And I will tell you, the last time I was here, exactly a week ago, we spoke the Vre Musar and Hit Orirut on the great concept of Shovabim, the days that we're in now. And that fantastic Pasuk in Parashat Vayichi, where Yaakov Avinu goes and gives Yosef at Tzadik something special. Va'ani natati lecha shchem echad al achecha. I'm giving you something one up above your brothers. I'm giving you Shechem. Last week we started the Shi'ur with this amazing Rav Shimshon Ashtrapoli who told us that that Pasuk was the secret behind the, um, the incredible Sigula of what we call today Shovabim. And that's what he was talking about. We said, Va'ani gematria elul natati lecha gematria tishre shchem gematria shovabim I gave you Shobabim equal to Elul and Tishrei in a year that's Achad Al Achecha. How many brothers were there? Twelve. One over twelve? Thirteen. A year that has thirteen months. A leap year. This year is the year that Shobabim is the strongest. It is equal. It is tantamount. To Elul and Tishrei. So if somebody didn't use Elul and Tishrei properly, you can make it up now with this Shobabim, especially in this year, a year that's a leap year. And I don't know about you, Rabotai, but many of us, this past year did not get a real grasp on the Elul and Tishrei. Because Elul this past year was so early. It was in August. It was one of those summer Elul, where everybody was still in vacay mode. Their brains were on vacation. We were in the beginning of August. We were running and vacationing and going. And silly huh? So if you're like me, and you're looking to make up for an Elul that you might not have taken real advantage, now's the time. Shor Bebi, which stands for the weeks of Shemot Va'era Bo Bishalach Yitro Bishpatim and this year because of the leap year we have two more as well what an opportunity says Rav Shem Shun Ashtrapoli Yaakov Avinu tells Yosef and don't think this came easy he says I fought for this Becharbiu Bekashti this didn't come simple I had to steal this Literally from Esav, Miyad HaEmori. Rashi writes, Mize Miyad Emori, Miyad Esav. When I fought with the angel, the Malach of Esav, I grabbed and stole the opportunity of Shobabim. I fought for this. I bled for this. So use it well. Becharbi with wisdom, says Rashi. Bikashti milashon bakasha tefila. I had to pray, I had to fight, but I got it for you. I got it for you. So here it is. It's right there in front of you. The weeks of Shobabim. Matter of fact, upstairs, you're going to have Rabbi Milstein coming at 240. And he's going to stand up there in front of a crowd that's strong. And he's going to say the Tikkun Harashash, which is the Tikkun of Shobabim. And we're going to listen along. And that Tikkun wipes and cleans all previous sins. Could you imagine? and especially the American sins. And you know good and well what I'm talking about. On camera, it's not right for me to be mefaret with prat, but you understand what I'm saying. All those sins that are difficult to get past and get rid of and stop doing, Shobabim was made for it. Here's the opportunity. Today is a week later. That was last week's derasha. Habibi, I'm not looking to be a repeat, believe me. That was last week's derasha. This week... We want to pick up on the same pasuk, but to go maybe with another mahalach, <clears throat> with another direction. Last week we went Rav Shem Shem Ashtrapoli. Here I have for you this week a new pshat. Vani natati lecha shchem. Ahad al achecha. I'm giving you something special, shchem, above your brothers. Says the Midrash, a new pshat. He gave Yosef the staff, 
the mate, the mate that was created in Sheshet Yemei Bereshit. Now this mate is more well known as the mate of Moshe. This is the famous stamp for Moshe Rabbeinu. This is the mate that Moshe held by all ten makot. You know this stamp. You remember the Mishnah Perkei Avot. There were ten things that were created ben Ashmashot by Sheshek Yemei Bereshit. So here we are, creation, day six, Friday afternoon, right before Shabbat, ben Ashmashot. Not here and not there, not day and not night. Right? In Jewish they say, Nishtahin, Nishtaher. It's not here, it's not there. It's somewhere in the twilight zone. And what was created in that twilight zone? Ten miraculous things. One of those ten miraculous things was the miraculous staff, the Mate of Moshe Rabbeinu. Do you know what was written on this staff? <coughs> was written on this staff a, a mnemonic that you remember from the Haggadah every year, Ditzach. Adash Be'achav, which is actually Rashi Tevot. It's a mnemonic for Ditzach, Dam, Svardeya, Kinim, Arov, Dever, Shechin, Barat, Arbe, Choshech, Makat Bechorot, right? Ditzach, Adash, Be'achav. So on the miraculous staff, written all ten makot. What else was written on that staff? It was written on that staff, and this is the Chidush from Sheshit Yemei Bereshit, from creation, already on the staff, there was the names of the Avot Agdoshim, Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. Already on that staff was the names of the six Imahot. Rabbi, six Imahot? I thought there was only four. No, no, come on, get with the program. We got Bilha and Zilpa as well. They were considered actually from those of the mothers of Klal Yisrael. Their names were on the staff as well, the miraculous staff of Moshe Rabbeinu. What else was on the staff, the miraculous staff? There was the Shem Hamforash, God's secret name. Machloket, if that Shem Hamforash was what we call the Shem Ayin Bet or not, that's not today's class beyond the scope of today. But the Shem Hamforash was on the Mate of Moshe Rabbeinu, this great staff. Listen to the direction and the journey. Today we're going to go with a very different type of class. Usually our style is to be able to give Musar Hizuk with a few story illustrations that we hope will hit the heart hard enough that you'll like it and place yourself in the story to one day be that person. Because I learned over the years, if you want to influence somebody to change, get them to get it going from themselves. Very little can you tell a person to do. But if you can inspire them to want to do it from themselves, if it's coming from themselves, those changes stick. You know how we inspire people to make changes that come from yourself and not from the speaker? We tell you an incredible story. You're inspired by the person in that story. You tell yourself, man, I want to be like that person in the story. The next time the opportunity comes, and you're faced with the challenge of the guy in the story, you might make the same decision as he. And suddenly you change because it came from you and not the speaker. This is something good, a technique to learn when it comes to dealing with children or anybody for that matter. Inspire people and they'll change on their own. If you try to change them, they'll take a step back. If you don't try to change them, but you only try to inspire them, they'll take a step forward. I hope that everyone understood what I just gave you because what I just gave you is a key, <laughs> oh my gosh, is a key to the whole sugi of people. In the meantime, let me tell you about the staff. So I told you what was written on the staff, right? I told you, the tzach, adash, be'achav, the three avot agdoshim, the six imahot, the shem Hashem, was all on the staff of Moshe Rabbeinu. This staff was given after created to Adam Arishon. Adam Arishon gave it to Chanoch. Chanoch gave it to Metushelach. Metushelach gave it to Noah. Noah gave it to Shem. Shem gave it to Abraham. Abraham gave it to Yitzhak. 
Yitzchak gave it to Yaakov, and Yaakov gave it to Yosef HaTzadik. Va'ani natati lecha shchem achad al achecha. I gave you something special above your brothers. Now you're going to ask me, what does Shechem have to do with the staff of Moshe Rabbeinu? Great question. Hold it for a moment. Let's see if we can get back to it. But the Midrash says that Yaakov Avinu gave him this incredible staff of Moshe Rabbeinu later on. Yosef HaTzadik later on passes away and the staff makes it to Moshe, which we'll talk about today. So this is where we're going. I want to tell you about a machloket between the Midrash and the Zohar HaKadosh. The Midrash writes that Moshe and Aharon shared the same staff. The Midrash found in Shemot, Chafav, Gimel, Rabotai, by the way, I should have mentioned in the beginning of our Shmuz that many of the Mar Mekomot today comes from the Sefer Magid Harakia, a very good friend, he did Nafshi Rabbi Gladstein, Shem Shablesen, Arichut Yamim Mishanim. I would like to give him the credit where credit is due, Hashem Shagivim Siyat Deshmaya, to continue to put out great Marma Komot for Klal Yisrael. Listen to this amazing Machloke Medrash Zohar. <coughs> the Medrash writes that Moshe Rabbeinu and Aharon HaKohen both shared the same mate. They just switched off. Aharon did the maka, dam, svardea, kinim, with the stick. Moshe Rabbeinu did barad, arbe, with the stick. And the other makot, Moshe did with his hand. As the pasuk says, nite yadecha ala shamayim. Later on, kriyat yamsuf as well. It's amazing. The Zohar HaKadosh does not agree. The Zohar HaKadosh writes that Moshe had his staff and Aharon had his staff, and they were completely two different sticks. Matter of fact, Moshe's staff was made out of Samperinon. Moshe's staff was made out of a very precious stone. Samperinon, says Rashi. This staff of Moshe Rabbeinu made out of stone weighed 40 se'ah. You know where we heard 40 se'ah before? A mikveh is 40 se'ah. Rabotai, do you think you can raise up a mikveh's worth of water? <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think you can get 10 guys to raise up a mikveh worth of water. That was the weight of the staff of Moshe Rabbeinu. And Moshe raised it up at one hand. It weighed, the Midrash says, it weighed 40 se'ah. It was that heavy. But he was able to raise it up and he was able to do the miracles that Borei Olam brought him to do. This is an incredible thing. So now Rabotai. This Samperinon staff, says the Zohar HaKadosh, was Moshe Rabbeinu's staff. Aharon's staff was made out of wood, a completely different staff. So we have a machloket. Were there two sticks or what? Comes the Rugged Shavah Gaon. And the Rugged Shavah tells us that there's no question that there were two separate sticks, one Moshe, one Aharon. And he says, I'll prove it to you. The Rugged Shavah Gaon, he was a great genius. The way he learned the story of Memeriva, years later when Moshe Rabbeinu hit the rock, the one thing that Borei Olam had ta'anan, Moshe Rabbeinu, he hit the rock. Says the Rugged Shavah, do you know how he explains the challenge that Moshe Rabbeinu, I'm not going to say mistake, Moshe Rabbeinu, you say the word mistake? No, no. The challenge that Moshe Rabbeinu had when hitting the rock, the Rugged Shavah says Moshe Rabbeinu, the challenge he had was he ended up hitting the rock with the wrong stick. That's the way he learns the story. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Where we always thought the challenge of Moshe and the story of Mehmet was that Moshe hit the rock instead of speaking to the rock. That's the way we all... The Rugged Shavah does not learn this way. The Rugged Shavah Gaon learns that Moshe Rabbeinu, it was okay to hit the rock, but he hit it with the wrong stick. Instead of hitting it with his stick, made out of stone, he ended up hitting it with Aharon's stick, which was made out of wood. So what? So what's the problem? 
Where was the challenge? Where was the issue? Says the Rugged Shavagaon, Rabbi Tylerson, well, the story happened right after Miriam passed away. Because of Miriam, we had the Be'er Miriam in the Midbar. Now that Miriam passed away, we no longer have the Be'er. That Be'er served not only as drinking water, that also was the Mikveh, that was the Mikveh that they used in the Midbar, the Be'er Miriam. When Miriam passes away, the Be'er left. Now, not only don't we have water to drink, we don't have water to bathe. There's no mikveh in Klal Yisrael. So you know what happened? Moshe Rabbeinu now, when he hit the rock to release the water, instead of hitting it with his staff of stone, he hit it with the staff of Aharon, says the rugged Shavu. Aharon's staff was made of wood. Wood is mikabel tum'ah. So when you create a mikveh with a davar that's mikabel tum'ah, says the Mishnah and mikvaot, the mikveh is psula. So now Moshe Rabbeinu, after he hit the rock with the wrong stick, he created a mikveh in the midbar that was not kosher. So now our ladies had no place to purify themselves. And therefore, there was no shalom in the home. And that's why the story, says Raghachava, was called Me Meriva, the waters of strife, the waters of fighting, the waters of mafi shalom bayit. That's the reason why it got the name that it got. But what do we get from this Raghachava? An amazing idea. We see Ben Met, he goes with the Zohar that there were two separate mate, two separate staff. Moshe had his, it was made out of stone, samperinon. Aaron has his, and it was made out of wood. And that was the problem. The problem was that wood is mikabel tuma. If Moshe would have hit the rock with his staff, made out of stone, it would have been no problem, because stone is not mikabel tuma. Wood is, wow, that's a wow. That's incredible. Now the, the, the name of the story makes sense. Me Miriva. But you see the rugged shovel went with the Zor HaKadosh. Ah, Moshe Rabbeinu. So he has a staff that's made out of Samperinon. This very special and what we would call special stone. This story goes back to Moses Mendelssohn and the Vilna Gaon. If you've never heard this story before, you don't know what you're missing. Rabotai, a precious stone, showed up in Germany in the days of Moses Mendelssohn. For those of you who are not as historically uh, equipped, Moses Mendelssohn was known as the grandfather of Reform and Conservative Judaism. He was an apicotist at the time. He was very learned and very respectful by the Goyim. But by Klal Yisrael, the Vilna Gaon already called him Apikores. Moses Mendelssohn was approached by a whole team of German scientists from the highest universities. This rock showed up in Germany and nobody knew Mativa. Nobody saw this rock before. Where did this come from? What type of rock is it? So they brought it to the pros, to the professionals, to the scientists, to the earth science Scientists, remember that regent you took in high school, Earth Science? Yeah, well, was my days. They didn't have it yet. They just called it science, <laughs> anyways. But the Earth Science regent, they brought it to the Earth Science professors, and they asked them, "What type of rock is this?" They had no clue. We said we never, in all our studies, have ever come across a rock like this. So they said, "You know what? Maybe this is out of the scope of science. Let's go to one of the scholars of Judaism." Yeah. So the professors turned to Moses Mendelssohn. They figured he's a rabbi. A rabbi has to know his stuff. Maybe Judaism talks about this rock. So they come to Moses Mendelssohn and they show him the rock and they say, uh, Rabbi Mendelssohn, do you know what type of rock this is? Maybe it showed up in your scripture. Moses Mendelssohn looks at the rock and he has no clue, but he wants to save face. So he says to him, there's a rabbi out in Vilna. He's known as the genius of Vilna, the Vilna Gaon. 
If somebody knows, he'll know. But my feeling is he probably won't know because they're not as schooled in the science of the world. You see, Mendelssohn saw this as an opportunity to be able to hop the Vilna Gaon. Ke'ilu, ke'ilu, that has for shalom to say that the Gaon is only into Torah, but not into science. So what is he going to do? Listen to this diabolical play. He's going to now bring the whole crew, the whole staff of scientists and professors up to Vilna. They're going to come in front of Vilna Gaon. They're going to present him the rock. And he says, the Gaon's not going to know what type of rock this is. Come on. And at that moment, I'll be able to prove my point. You see, I brought a whole delegation of scientists to the Vilna Gaon, who is the Gadol Ador, and he didn't know what type of rock this was. I'm going to show now all the Jews in Europe that I was right. You have to go to the German universities. You have to go out to science. You have to go out to the world of intellect. Because the Torah, I don't even want to say what he said. So this was a trap. But Heike, he wanted to also try to save face. To say, I don't know. No, I think I know. But I want to make, I want to compare notes with the Vilna Gaon. Come with me. So he takes the whole delegation to Vilna from Germany. They come into the Vilna Gaon. Rabotai, listen to this amazing Maase. Moses Mendelssohn comes into the Gaon. The Gaon was sitting there and learning, in, learning but he was immersed. In his Torah learning, the Gaon didn't even know they walked in. It was after a few minutes that Mendelssohn makes noise to get the Gaon's attention. The Gaon looks up and he sees this whole delegation of Goyim with Moses Mendelssohn standing in his house. So the Gaon looks and says, so how can I help you? So Moses Mendelssohn says, Rabbi, these men are from Germany, top universities. We want to know if you know what type of rock this is. And he hands it to Vilna Gaon. Gaon takes a quick look at the rock and he tells Mendelssohn, he says, listen, I'm in the middle of learning now. I don't want to be Mivatel Torah. Come back in an hour when I finish my seder and I'll tell you. So Mendelssohn says, okay. okay. Yeah, the seder. He walks out and Gaon goes back to learning. As the Gaon is in the middle of learning, there was a boy a child of a neighbor who would come into the house of the Gaon often to do all different types of chores. Now this boy comes in holding a cup of water. He walks into the house holding the cup of water and he sees the rock sitting on the table of Vilna Gaon. As every good curious boy, what do you think he did? He picks up the rock and he starts playing with the rock. Where do you think the rock ended up? Splash! right in the cup all of a sudden the boy's jaw drops he says Haraf! the Gaon looks up and they both look down and they see that when the rock fell into the cup of water the water inside of the cup split in half Kriyat Yamsuf Mini inside this cup and the rock sat right in the middle of the two walls of water untouched dry the Gaon says oh that rock is the famous Samperinon rock what Moshe Rabbeinu's mate was made out of the famous mate that was created from the time of Sheshet Yemei Bereshit that was the rock of Moshe, the one that said on it, Ditzach, Adash, Be'ahav, three avod, six imahod, and of course, the Shem Hashem. This rock has some sort of magnetic force that when it comes in contact with water, it makes the water divide. Sure enough, moments later, the door opens to the house of the Gaon. In walks Mendelssohn with the delegation of professors. New rabbi, Tachlis, you have an answer? Could you tell us? Because, you know, the earth science professors don't know. Let's see what the rabbi knows. The Gaon smiles and he says, This rock is Sampirinon. This is the rock 
of Moshe Rabbeinu's staff. Unbelievable. The famous Samperinon. He says, this rock has a very special thing to it. It has a magnetic force. And Gaon demonstrates. He drops the rock again into the cup of water. And the water splits. Kriyat Yam Suf Mimi. Mendelssohn's like, and the, 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 the professors, they're looking at each other. They're saying, these rabbis, they're, they're brilliant. They know more earth science than we teach. Wow, what a kiddush Hashem. What a kiddush Hashem. But now, Mendelssohn decides he's going to turn the tables on the Gaon. He couldn't be Mivayesh the Gaon because he came up with the amazing answer. But now he says, now, Rabbi, I got you. That's not Prima, right? Yes. That's what came from the staff of Moshe Rabbeinu, right? Yes. Now I can prove, says Mendelssohn, that Kriyat Yamsuf was not a miracle. Huh. Now I can prove to the world that I, what I've been telling them all these years, that everything can be proven through science. You see, Kriyat Yamsuf wasn't a miracle. It was Samperino, magnetic force. Come in contact with water, and the water splits. Mendelssohn has this big smile of victory. The Gaon looks at him and smiles and says, Ay, 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 Mendelssohn, you are picarious, you. I said that with the Ashkenaz term because that's the way the Gaon said it. Mendelssohn, you are picarious, you. You don't even know a pasuk in Chumash. What? God opens up parasha b'shalach, kriyat yamsuf. And what does Hashem tell Moshe Rabbeinu? He tells him, harem et maticha. Raise up your staff and put it aside. Because this you're not doing with your stick. Unte yadecha al hayam. This miracle, you're going to do it in your hand. I don't want you to do Kriyat Yamsuf with your stick. You know why? Said the Gaon. Because years later, there's going to be an Apikairis called Mendelssohn, who's going to try to explain Kriyat Yamsuf al P. Science! Says Bori Olam. That's why. Put the Samparin on aside for this one. This miracle, I want you to do it in your hand so that everyone, including the Apikairis, will understand that it was Ma'aseh Hashem Nesim V'Niflaot Ma'asheraa Shifcha Al Hayam Lo Ra'a Yehezkel Ben Buzi Wow! Says the Gaon, Ya Apikairis, you don't even know what a Pasuk in Chumash! You don't even know! He threw them all out. This was the staff of Moshe Rabbeinu, Rabotai. This was the famous Samperinon staff. And look what was written on it. Everything from the Shemam Forash, the Tzach, Adash, Be'achar, Avraham, Yitzhak, Yaakov, Adam Arishon, <laughs> he gives it to Chanoch, to Metushelach, to Noah, to Shem, to Abraham, to Yitzhak, to Yaakov. And Yaakov now, Yaakov now gives it to Yosef. I give you something special. I'm giving you this incredible staff. Rabotai. But how did it get to Moshe Rabbeinu? How did it get there? Eh, how did it get there? How did it get to Moshe Rabbeinu? Rabotai. Moshe was born after Yosef was dead. I'm going to tell you something fascinating. Again, I mentioned that today's shiur is not the typical shiur. Historical journey of this amazing mate Moshe. Rabotai, open your hearts. How did Moshe Rabbeinu get it? Well, right after Yosef HaTzadik died. This is brought in the Midrash. This is also brought in Tosafot. I have all the Mekomot here on the page. Anyone after the class wants to look it up inside, I have it for you, black and white. The Tosafot is Tosafot HaShalem Dalit Vav. The, uh, the, uh, the Medrash over here is Medrash Sechel Tov Shemot Dalit Yud Zayin. You'll look it up. He tells you this amazing story. 
Yosef HaTzadik right after he passed away. What you don't know is that Paro ransacked Bet Yosef. And he took everything that was there, including the stick of Samperino. Yitro quickly realized that if he doesn't get that miraculous stick, who knows whose hands it would fall into. Now, Botai, who were the three advisors of Paro? Iov, Yitro, who's number three? Bil'am! Oh, could you imagine? I was Hashalom, Hashalom, Hashalom. If that staff, the mate of San Perinon from Sheshi Mebereshit, would fall in the hands of Bilam Oive, you'd have Harry Potter all over again. Shema Yisrael. What would happen here, Shema Yisrael? Yitro went and grabbed the stick, and he stole it. He took it, and he ran away. Where did he run to? Midian. And he became Kohen Midyam. Now what did he do with the stick, Rabotai? He put it in his backyard. And little did he realize that when he put it down in the rock in the backyard, it went straight into the rock. So therefore, King Arthur, if you ever wanted to know where the Goyim got all their story, they got everything from us. Everything is from us. Excalibur, everything is from Claudius. Well, everything. Everything started from us. He put it in the back, in the backyard, in the rock, and it, that's where it stayed. After that, he tried to pull it out, and he couldn't. Says the Medras, Sechil Tov, and you find this as well in Pirkei Der Blazer. Yitro announced, if there is anyone that's tzaddik enough, raui enough, to be able to take this stick out from the rock, he will get my daughter Tzipora as a wife. For 80 years, there has been all different types of knights in shining armor that would come and try to grab the stick Samperinon out, the Loholech. And then, sure enough, Moshe Rabbeinu runs away from the Tzrayim. <laughs> Paro wants to kill him. He comes to Midian. He's there by the shepherds stealing the water from the Benot Yitro. Moshe Rabbeinu fights them off, saves the Benot of Yitro. They bring him back to Yitro's house, and Yitro sees on him that he, he's Ish Elokim. Yitro says, "You look like Ish Elokim. I know what Ish Elokim looks like." Says Yitro, he saw Yosef. Yitro saw Yosef. I know what Ish Elokim looks like. Says Yitro. I want you to come with me to the back. Says the Midrash, Sech, uh, Tov, again, Tosafot HaShalem. He brought him, and Moshe put his hand on the staff of Samperino, and he took it out like butter. Yitro says, this is the Isha Elohim. He is going to be the Mashiach Hashem. Yitro. He's going to be Mashiach Hashem. You're the chosen one. You're the one they're looking for. They're looking for you. They threw all the boys in the Nile River in order to try to stop the Jewish Mashiach from coming to save Klaus or Mitzrayim. You're the one they're looking for. You're the Mashiach. Moshe Rabbeinu, Mitoch, Da'anivut, what Mashiach, Ani, Afar Efer. What are you talking about? I don't know what you're talking about. Moshe brushed it off. But Moshe has to stay. The next day is the Maaseh of the Sne. It's not really the next day. It's really four days later. But the next day, the Shepsel of the sheep runs. Moshe chases this baby sheep. Three days later, because it was a three-day run, he meets and catches up with the sheep by the Sne, which was on Harabayit. And Moshe is standing there holding the staff. Ay, 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 Rabotai. I want you to picture this. He's standing holding the Samperinon, the staff of Adam Arishon. He's holding the staff of Abraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov. He's holding the staff, Mashiach Hashem. And he sees the snare burning. And Borei Olam, for the first time, is Migalem himself to Moshe Rabbeinu, holding Samperinon. 
And Borei Olam tells Moshe Rabbeinu, you're the one that's going to go to Paro. You're the one that's going to take my nation out of Egypt. And Moshe Rabbeinu says, me? How could that be? How, me? I have a speech impediment. I can't speak. My brother Aharon, he's so much bigger than me. My older brother Gadol Hador, he's the one you want, not me. I have nothing. And Borei Olam got up, Kivyacho, Kivyacho, Borei Olam got upset. Till finally, Borei Olam tells Moshe Rabbeinu something that ended the conversation, Rabbutai. We always wanted to understand. Hashem asks Moshe, Ma ze biyadecha? Isn't that a funny question? Hashem is asking you, Ma ze biyadecha? Ulo yodea? He knows what's in your pocket. <laughs> he knows what's in your wallet. He needs to ask you, well, what's in your hand? What type of redundant question is that? From Bore Olam, Mazabiyadecha? It wasn't a question, Rabotai. It was a hochacha. It was a proof to Moshe that you're the one. Mazabiyadecha, says Moshe, Mate, says Bore Olam, exactly. Case closed. You're the one holding the staff. You're the one holding the mate, the great mate of Samprinon. You know who held that staff? Look whose names are on it. It's written on the staff. Abraham, Yitzhak, Yaakov. That was the staff that Yaakov gave to Yosef. That staff made it to Yitro. And the Midrash tells us, in Yitro's backyard, Moshe Rabbeinu was the only one to be able to pull it out. You're holding the staff because only the leaders of Klal Yisrael, the ones that are zochet in nevuah, only the Navi is allowed to hold that staff. So it wasn't a question. It was a proof. You say you're not worthy? Mazebiyadecha. And what is the answer? Vayomer mate says Borei Olam exactly checkmate. <clears throat> that proves to you. That proves to you that you're the one, or else you wouldn't be holding this thing. If you're holding this mate, ata navi, ata gadol, ata manhig, ata mashiach Hashem. Psst, wow, wow, wow! It's unbelievable. This is unbelievable. And therefore, I will tell you, this answers a big question. You know, on the staff, it said all ten makot. Ditzach, Adash, Be'achav. And yet, only five out of the ten makot were actually done with the staff. Only five. Which ones were done with the staff, Rabotai? Dam, Swarbea, Kini. And then, later on, Barad, Arbe. That's it. These five. The other five were not done with the staff. Choshech, netei yad chal ha-shamayim. Makat b'chorot, forget about it. So hang on one second. How come all ten makot are written on the staff if only five are going to be done with it? And the answer is it has nothing to do with the doing of the makkah. It has to do with who's holding the staff when the makot are done. This is the Manhig of Klal Yisrael. He's holding the staff of Mashiach. He's ho- he is the Mashiach Hashem. As long as you're holding that staff, you're the chosen one. You can do all the Makot. And that's why Ramosha Mitrani, do you know that name? Ramosha Mitrani. He wrote the Sefer Bet Elokim. He was a contemporary of the Arizal HaKadosh. He lived in Tzvat. He was a great Tzvaradi Mekubal Gaon Sadiq Gadol Ador. He was buried. If you ever went to Tzvat, the old cemetery, you have the Arizal, you have the Ramak, you have the Balach Adodi, <coughs> and right off a little bit to the left, you have the Kever of Remoshem Mitrani. People come from all over the world to that Kever to be Zochet to Nisi Yeshuot, Nisi Minflaot. He was a Bal Mekubal Sadiq Tzvaradi Tahor. Ramosha Mitrani writes in his Sefer Bet Elokim that the word Mateh is written in Torah 22 times. Keneged, 
the 22 letters of Aleph Bet. No, Azma. Azma, okay, very nice. So what does that do? What does that mean? You know what that does? Let me tell you what that does. Bereshit. Bara Elohim. Et. In the beginning, Hashem created Et. Et. That's what He created. Aleph through Taf. Hashem first created, before anything else, Et. Aleph through Taf. The letters of the alphabet. All 22 letters of Aleph Bet. And the Gemara in Berachot. And the Gemara in many places tell us that each letter of the Aleph Bet has a certain koach in the letter. The Aleph is Echad, and the Bet is Bait, and the Gimel is Gimel Chasadim, and the Dalit is Dal, and each letter has power. You know how Hashem created the world? It was Mitzaref Otiot. He took different letters, and He brought them together, and that Siruf of Koho brought about creation. Shamayim. Shamayim. Sham. Mayim. He brought the Shin with the Mem, with the Yud and the Mem Sofi, Mitztaref, the Kochot. All of a sudden the sky appeared. The Otiyot have Koach. Says Ramosha Mitrami, Mate is written in Torah 22 times. Corresponds to 22 letters of the alphabet to show that the Mate had the Kochot of all 22 letters of Alphabet, with this mate, unbelievable, unbelievable the koach. And of course, Rabotai, let's get clear, it's not the mate that had any koach, we know that. There's no magic wands in Judaism, let's get this clear. Bore Olam wanted to bring these nisim about through a mate, you know why? Many people don't know the real answer, you know why? Why a mate, why? Because Boreolam does not like making miracles. So he creates a camouflage. You know who writes this? The Beta Levi. He creates a camouflage to make it look like it's coming from somewhere else so that people will still have the Nisayon of freedom of choice to believe it's Hashem or maybe it's something else. So therefore the Mate was meant as a camouflage in order that you should still be Baal Emuna Ubitachon She'en Od Milvado Zel Unbelievable But what do we just finish saying now? We said Moshe Rabbeinu gets a hold of the Mate and who did it come from? Derech Yitro Right? Yosef I want to tell you and with this we'll end the class I have a lot more to say but I know the time is never on my side so I just want to tell you Rabotai we have another Midrash, Yalkut Shemaoni, who writes very clearly in Shemot Resh Mem Zayin, Kuf Samachet, a different explanation of how the Mate got to you, Moshe Rabbein. He says that the Mate on Samprinon got to Moshe, Derech Yehuda, not Yosef. Nupshat. Where is this? Says the Midrash, Yalkut Shemaoni. Unbelievable Midrash. He says, this is also mentioned in the Midrash in Chukat, Tavshin Samach Gimel. He says over there very clearly that when Yaakov Avinu was coming down to Mitzrayim with his sons, Yaakov sends Yehuda ahead. Says the Midrash. Yaakov gave Yehuda the Mate and told him, you're going down to Mitzrayim, you're going to need this. Take it with you. This you carry to Goshen. With this, you'll build the yeshiva. With this, you'll build the yeshiva. Yehuda went with the mate down to Goshen, and he built the yeshiva Talmud Torah, like Rashi tells us. After Yehuda died, he gave it to the last living brother of the Shvatim. Who was the last living brother of the Shvatim, Rabotai? Yeah. Levi, very good. You guys are great. Great. Yehuda gives the mate to Levi. Levi passes away, gives the mate to Amram. It's the next Gadol Adon, Amram. Amram gave the mate to Moshe. Why not Aharon? He's older. Because Moshe was sent to the castle of Paro. Moshe was brought up in Bet 
Paro, he needed the Mateh. That's the other shot of how it got to Moshe Rabbein. Now, Rabotai, we have two Medrashim here. <laughs> One, Pirkei de Rebbe Le'ezer, Moshe Rabbeinu got the Mateh, Derech, Yosef, Yitro. The other, Yakut Shema'oni, Moshe got the Mateh, Derech, Yehuda, Levi, Amram. I want to tell you today a beauty, and this is the bang that we're going to end off with. Both Medrashim, Elu ve'elu divrei Elohim ha'im. Both 100%, of course, emet l'amito. How's it possible? How's it possible? <laughs> Make up your mind. Did it come from Yosef? Did it come from Yehuda? The answer is both. Ech, listen to this. I don't have it in front of me, and I'm going to give you the homework now. The Haftara of Parashat Vayigash. Look at the first three Pesukim. You're going to see something that's going to blow your mind. The second Pasuk talks about take a mate, write on it Yehuda. Then take another mate, write on it Yosef. Right? Yosef, mi bet Ephraim. What does the third Pasuk say? If do you write on this mate Yehuda, yo Very good. Kolakavod. 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 You learned Tanakh. Kolakavod lecha. Halavai, we would have learned Tanakh. <laughs> so, the war first mate, right? Yehuda. The other mate, right? Yosef. Bet Ephraim, right? And you know what the third Pasuk says? Take the mate of Yehuda. Take the mate of Yosef. And what should you do with it? Says the third Pasuk. Make it be ahad. Connect them together as one mate. Is a yofi. Unbelievable. Why Yehuda? Why Yosef? Why Yehuda? Why Yosef? Well, what does Yehuda and Yosef have in common? Mashiach ben Yosef. Mashiach ben David. What Mashiach is coming from? Yosef. One Mashiach is coming from Yehuda. And therefore, Yosef, you need to hold one mate because that's the sign of Mashiach. Though remember what we said in the beginning. The one who holds the mate. What did Yitro tell Moshe Rabbeinu when he pulled the mate out of the backyard? What did Yitro say? Ata Mashiach Hashem! You're the Mashiach! Because you're holding the mate. So what does the Navi say? We give one, we gave, not give, we gave one stick to Yosef, Mashiach ben Yosef. We gave one stick to Yehuda, Mashiach ben David. There's going to be two Mashiach. By the way, as an aside, no charge. You know why we need two Mashiach, right? Why you killed my whole shit. I'm joking, I'm joking. <laughs> you know why we need two Mashiach Rabotai? Ala Sheminit says the Midrash. Mazer Sheminit says the Midrash. Klal Yisrael is going to go through four Galiot. But each Galut is going to be two nations at a time. You thought that each Galut is one nation? Wrong. Two nations. Two nations. Bavel Kazdin, Galut number one. Paras Umadai, Galut number two. Yavan Mokdan, Galut number three. And who's the last Galut that we're in right now? Edom and Yishmael. Reb Chaim Kanievsky, Shalita, Admea Ve'esrim has a magnificent explanation in the Chad Gadya of who is the Malach and who is the Shochet. Is Esav the Shochet and Yishmael the Malach Or is Yishmael the Shochet and Esav the Malach Which one is which? Because Reb Chaim Kanievsky teaches us that the entire Chad Gadya is really Remez to all the Galuyot that Klal Yisrael are going to go through in the nations until the final coming of Mashiach. Who's going to be the last standing nation? Is it going to be Esav? Is it going to be Yishmael? I'm scared to tell you what Reb Chaim Kanevsky came out with at the end. Between me and you, according to his maskana, we're in the wrong country. According to Reb Chaim Kanievsky, but the question is who's who's standing last? That's no gay alano. 
Rukhain Kanievsky no. says Yishmael. He says that the Shochet is Esav, Malchamavet is Yishmael. Yado Bakol ve Yad Kol Bo. Wow, 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 unbelievable. So we're right now in a double header Galu. There's East versus West, right? Esav versus Yishmael. East versus West. That's the Galut that we're in right now. And if that's the case, we need two Mashiach. Because we need to be saved from <coughs> two nations. Yosef is always the one that's going to be Esav. Yaakov Avinu told us, Bet Yosef lehava, Bet Esav lekash, right? Nachon? Esav, he's finished with Yosef. We're in a double header galut. Esav Yishmael. Hence we need to Mashiach. Mashiach ben Yosef is going to take us out from Esav. Mashiach ben David is going to take us out from Yishmael. Ani harochev al ha chamor. Chamor. Who's chamor? Domele. Oh, eze am domele chamor. Yishmael. So Mashiach ben David is rochev. Allah Hamor, who's who Rochev Al Yishmael. Two Galut, two nations, two Mashiach. So it came a time where we take two sticks. One is the stick of Yosef, Mashiach ben Yosef. One is the stick of <laughs> Yehuda, Mashiach ben David. And we come now, what is the third Pasuk? We make it be Ahad, we make it one staff. This is the staff of Mashiach Hashem. Wow. What happened to this staff? Where is it? What happened to it? One Midrash in Yakut Shemaoni writes that the last time he writes it was seen was in the time of Yermia when they went to be Gonez the Aaron. They also were Gones, the Samperinon, the staff as well. It was hidden away with the Aaron Haidut, the Aaron Elokim. That's one Medrash. But the Perke de Rebile Ezer does not agree. And this is amazing, Rabotai. The Perke Eliezer writes that when Moshe Rabbeinu walked up Har Nevo and he went up to be buried by none other than Bore Olam himself, Har Nevo. Har Shenun Bo. That was the moment that Moshe Rabbeinu reached the Nun, the 50th level of Kiddushah, on his step out of this world. He ascends to the top of the mountain, writes the Midrash, he went up with the Samperinon, with the Mate Moshe, with the stick. And he was buried with the stick. Wait one second, Abotai. How in the world can Moshe be buried with the stick? If Beinenu, we just got finished saying that this stick is going to be attached back together, brought back together, and it's going to be the staff of Mashiach. But Moshe took it to the grave. How is this going to work? And the answer is the Pasuk and the Haftarah. The answer is something unbelievable. Rabotai, open your hearts and we'll close with this. There were two staffs. One was the staff of Yosef. One was the staff of Yehuda, Mashiach ben Yosef, Mashiach ben David. You know how these two staffs became two staff? Because Yaakov Avinu cracked it in half. He gave one half of the staff to Yosef, Mashiach ben Yosef. He gave one staff to Yehuda, Yehuda ata yoducha achecha. One staff, Mashiach ben David. Yehuda comes down with a half a staff. Half a stick. Yosef had in the bed paro, half a stick. Each one half, Mashiach, Mashiach. Yosef dies. Yitro steals from the antechamber of paro, the half a stick of Yosef. And he runs to Midian and he puts the half in his backyard, the Midrash. <coughs> Yehuda had the other half. Yehuda now comes along and gives it to Levi, who gives it to Amram, who gives it to Moshe. Moshe now has half a staff in Bet Paro. 
Moshe runs away from Mitzrayim with half a staff. He shows up to the Bet Yitro with half. Yitro says, <laughs> I have the other half. Moshe comes to Bet Yitro and he takes out the other half. And what does Moshe do? Rabotai. This was the prophecy. This was what we said, Parashat Vayigash, the Haftarah. You're going to take one stick that has on it Yosef. You're going to take the other stick that has it Yehuda. And what are you going to do with these two sticks? You're going to make him Ke'ahad. You know who did that? Moshe Rabbeinu. This is the, this is the staff Moshiach Hashem. Unbelievable. That's why Borei Olam says to Moshe, Maze biyadecha? Moshe says, Mate, says Borei Olam, exactly. End of story. That's the answer, that you were the chosen one. Stop being the Anav. I'm telling you, you're the Mashiach Hashem. You're the one that's going to paro to take out Klal Yisrael. Maze biyadecha. A full mate. You have Yosef in one hand. You have Yehuda on the other side. You're going complete Mashiach Shalem. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. And because of this, says Orachim HaKadosh, and you'll find this Orachim HaKadosh in Parashat Shemot, or Chaim HaKadosh writes, Moshe Hu Melech HaMashiach. I just had to tell them in Hebrew because they wouldn't have gotten it. So then Or Chaim HaKadosh asks on himself the famous question that you and I would ask, how could Moshe be the Mashiach Latid Lavo? He's not from Bet David. He's not from Yehuda. Answers Or Chaim HaKadosh Vahamevin Yavin. That's it. That's what he read. Really, that's what he answers. What's pshat v'hamevin yavin? So I once asked the big tzaddik in Eretz Yisrael. I said, what, 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 "How could it be?" I mean, just, just you know, accord, again, rabotai. I'm not saying that the Midrash says this. I'm not saying that the Zohar says this. The Orachim Hakadosh. I'm explaining now only al derech the Orachim Hakadosh. According to everybody else, Mashiach is from the Davidic line of David HaMelech. There's nothing to talk about. But the Orachayim holds that Moshe Rabbeinu is going to be the Mashiach Latid Lavo. I asked a great tzaddik in Eretz Yisrael, how do you explain this? He said to me, I'll explain it to you. He says, Moshe Rabbeinu was buried with the staff like the Midrash tells us. Moshe Rabbeinu is going to come back as Mashiach holding the staff of both Yehuda and Yosef. He says, This that we need, the Bet David, Ben David Avdecha, Yavo, Vigaleno, Mashiach is coming from Bet David, Mashiach is coming from <coughs> Bet Yosef. This is the staff of the tribes of Yehuda and Yosef Shalem. And the one that holds it is the Mashiach of Ben David and Bet Yosef Shalem. I said, what does that mean? And you know what he tells me? Vahamevin yavin. So I said, so I'm right back to the Orachim HaKadosh. But that was his explanation. If we can make sense of that, I don't know. But I think the clearest sense will be that Bezat Hashem, you see everything that's going on in the world now makes no sense. The opening words of this week's parasha. Et asher hit alalti b'mitzrayim. Hashem says, before I took you out of Egypt, I made a mockery out of Egypt. Would you ever believe that the United States of America would be in the situation it's in now? Is this the country that you and I grew up in? I don't think so. Everything is a mockery from beginning to end. From the top all the way down. You ask the doctors, and they tell you, we don't know. First we thought this, and then we thought that. And then the vaccine was working, but now it's not. And then we ran with the plasma, but that doesn't work for the grandson of the original corona. We have no idea what's going on. Nobody has a clue. We're running in a hundred different directions, and they're already predicting that corona is going to have great-grandchildren, and there's going to be more and more. What's going on? Et asher hit alalti it became a big mockery. The FDA doesn't know. The CDC doesn't know. The doctors, they tell you they don't know. 
we keep going back to some guy who thinks he's a doctor. And the, wor the more we listen, the more, look what's going on. The cure is a problem. The problem is a cure. <laughs> Everything is olam hafuch ra'iti. It's exactly what Hashem did. To That's exactly what Hashem did to Mitzrayim. It's exactly what Hashem did to Mitzrayim right before he took us out. He took a superpower and he made a mockery. Gentlemen, watch the mockery, but don't get swayed by the mockery. Remember, it's smoke and mirrors. The one behind all of the craziness that we're watching is the only one. Just like the staff was a camouflage for Hashem's Nisim, everything you're watching now is a great stage, a camouflage for the Nisim and Flaot that we're going to be Zocher to finally meet the Melech HaMashiach, according to Orachim HaKadosh, Moshe Rabbeinu, holding the staff Shalem of Yosef and Yehuda Bikarov Biyame. Thank you for this. <laughs> 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 <laughs>